Hi, today I'll be introducing NumPy arrays and showing you how to create them and use them in Python. These exercises will probably seem a little dry, but they're the fundamentals of data analysis in Python, because almost all computational libraries like Pandas and Scikit-Learn are built on top of NumPy. So knowing how to use NumPy will be crucial in understanding how these other libraries behave and work. I'm going to try to make this as interactive as possible so you can follow along with me by downloading the Python notebook in the link in the description. You can open up the notebook in either Jupyter Notebooks or Google Colabs. In this case, I'm using Google Colabs. There's also a short description of NumPy if you want to learn a little bit more right here in this intro to NumPy section. But basically, NumPy is a library that makes it really easy for anyone to save data, save values, and perform mathematical operations. So once you have the notebook open in either Google Colabs or Jupyter Notebooks, uh, let's get started. So we're actually not going to start with NumPy arrays, but we're going to start with lists in Python. Lists are natively built into Python and doesn't actually require you to import any libraries. They're great to store values and re retrieve data very easily, just like a NumPy array. So we'll actually get started since this is like the fundamental building block of Python. So let's think about a manual way of creating lists. Right now in this notebook, I actually have a lot of code already written out for you. So a lot of what you really need to do is just execute the, the code block. You don't have to actually write anything. Um, so a manual way of creating a list um, looks like this. It's the variable name equals and then the values that we want in our list. To create a list, all you really need to do is have brackets on the left and right of the values that you want to create. So if I execute this line, I get this number on the left hand side, it says nine. It just means that this is the ninth code that I've executed in this notebook. It means that I actually did execute uh, the, the line of code. And so it looks like it was successful. And if I wanted to see what A has stored in the variable, I'm just gonna create a new code block, type in A and run it. And what comes out is this Python list. It's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that's a really easy way of manually creating a Python list. So there are other ways to create a Python list. There, we can use functions. So in this case right here, we are using actually two functions. We're using a range function here, and then we're gonna use a list function, and then we're gonna save that into our variable L. So let's actually just break this down. Let's break down these functions. So what does range 10 actually mean? So if I just type in range 10 and execute that, what do I get? I get something that says range 0 to 10. And all that really means is that there are values that start from 0 and go all the way up to 10, but doesn't include 10. So there, there are actual elements in values in this, not, not list, but in this range that go from 0 to 9 right now. And so by actually then adding the function list, I turn this range into a list. And it looks something like this, right? Zero all the way up to nine. And then what I'm gonna do last is I'm just gonna save this list into a variable called L. And that's what I have up here. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete this bottom code block and I'm gonna just save the list in the variable L and then I'm going to display it. And that's exactly what I'm expecting. I'm expecting a list with range with values ranging from zero to nine. So then another thing we can do with lists in Python is figure out what the data type of that list is. Right now we know that they're numbers. But in Python, there are two types of numbers. There are integers and there are floats. Floats are basically numbers that have decimals. These don't have decimals, so what I'm expecting is to return an integer. So to actually figure out what the data type is on a list, I'm just gonna use the function type, 
and then I'm going to add the, the list right here. And so if I type, if I execute this, I see an int, right? And so you might be wondering why is there brackets and a zero? Well, all I'm really doing is I'm calling to the position of a value. So a zero is actually the first position of the list here. So in Python, positions and indices is another, uh, another word for it. Uh, these numbers correspond to the position of the value in that list. And in Python, the numbering starts at zero. So at position zero, at index zero, the value is actually zero here. And so it, I, what, I'm, th what this code is saying is, what is the data type of the value zero? And it, it, it's returning an int, an integer. So I've covered a manual way of creating a list, a more automatic way of creating a list using functions, and then figuring out the data type. What we can also do is create a list that instead of, use, instead of uses numbers, uses text. In other words, uses strings. So if we want to use text in Python, we, we use the word strings. So this is a function here that will basically convert all of the numbers in my variable L. And so L has these numbers here that I'm, hi I'm highlighting. And it's going to convert it to a data type string. And then it's going to save everything into a variable called L2. So you don't actually need to know what this function, how to write this function and all of that. Just try to follow along with what what we're trying to do here just so that you have it in your head because we're, we're going to be dealing with numpy arrays a little bit later on and so if you know how things actually behave and if you know a little bit about data types and a little bit about you know indexes and positions i think you'll be fine when you learn about numpy arrays so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to create a list of strings l2 and I'm going to I'm going to actually display it and output it here. So I'm going to create a new line. I'm going to type L2 so I know what the output looks like. And what I have right now is a bunch of values 0 to 9 just like up here at the top, but I know they're strings because there are quotations, single quotations around the numbers. So whenever there are single or double quotations around, you know, text numbers, letters, it means that it's a string. And in this case, this line of code was successful in converting the integers into strings. And so just to confirm that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the function type to find out if, it, if this zero is indeed a string and it's, it says it is a string. str is shorthand for string. So we can have different data types in our list. We can have an integer, we can have a string. We can even mix and match the data type and the values in our list. So here we're creating a list called L3. We have the, the word true. We have the word or, or the string two. And you can tell because it's encased in quotations and it turned red. We have a float right here because a float is a number with a decimal and a 3.0 has a decimal. And then we have an integer four. So what this function does at the bottom here is it's gonna go one by one. It's gonna go to true, two, three, and four. And then it's gonna spit out what the data type is. So if I, if I execute this line of code, it tells me exactly what the data types are, right? Bool is short for Boolean. Boolean is either true or false, one or zero. So that's true. And then string for this string two, float for this 3.0 and integer for this four. So we can have a list with many different data types. So that's it for lists in Python. What we want to do next is cover arrays in Python. So let's talk about arrays in Python. So what is an array? 
An array, just like it says right here, is a data structure that allows you to store values just like a Python list. So how is it different? An array is more efficient at storing large amounts of data, and it's easier and simpler to perform numerical and mathematical operations. So that's exactly why NumPy was invented, because of the latter point that it's much, much easier to perform numerical and mathematical operations. And that's the reason why a lot of computational libraries like Pandas, Scikit-Learn, stat models, they're all built using NumPy's as the building block. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce NumPy's and basically create a few arrays just so you know how to create them and how it behaves and maybe how they're a little bit different than creating lists in Python. So the first thing to do is always to import NumPy. So I'm gonna do that here. And what I have written down is basically import NumPy as NP. And you'll see this almost with any code that people will always alias NumPy as NP. So that way when you call um, a NumPy library or a, a sorry, a NumPy function, you can just type in the letters NP. And so I'll show you that with this next line of code. So to create an, a NumPy array, all I'm gonna do is call this NP, which is NumPy, and then I'm gonna call this function called array to actually create that array. So let me break this down actually in, in uh, two steps. I'm going to create a, a list. I'm going to call it list. And I'm going to actually copy and paste this Python list here. So I have, so I'm going to actually call it list A. So I have a variable called list A. It's a Python list with the values 1, 4, 2, 5, 3. And now I want to convert this Python list into a NumPy array. And so all I really need to do is call the NumPy library, use this NumPy function called array, and add my variable in here, list A. All right. And so what I'm going to do is then I'm going to save this array into another variable. I'm going to call it NumPy array A. Sorry for the really long name. And then I'm going to display this numpy, numpy array A, just so I know that everything works the way I'm expecting it to work. And so let's execute this line of code. And this is exactly what I'm expecting. I'm expecting my variable numpy array to be an array uh, with the values one, four, two, five, three. That's exactly right. So what we just did was we created a NumPy array from this Python list. The next thing is, is a discussion about data type. So in this, in this NumPy array, I basically have a float here, a 3.14, and then I have three integers, four, two, three, right? And so if I, execute this line of code, what you see is the integers are actually converted into floats. And the reason why I know this is because the four has a period right after it, the two and the three does as well. And so this is basically saying 4.0, 2.0, 3.0. So the behavior of a NumPy array is different than a list in Python. A NumPy array will typically only have one data type. So if this first value is a float, then the following values are also going to be floats. And this is exactly why you see what you see here. And it's very different than a Python list that can have different data types. You can also create multi-dimensional arrays using lists of lists. So right here I have basically three lists. Right, so I have a one list here that's one, two, three, and you, you know it's a list because it's encased in brackets. And then comma, another list here that's three, four, and then comma, another list here that's three, three. All of this is then encapsulated in, enclosed in basically another bracket here that makes it one NumPy array. So if I execute this, 
I get exactly this, right? I get list one, two, three, list three, four, and list three, three. I have three lists in my array. So that's kind of it for creating arrays from Python lists.